Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. This is part four, the final part for today. It's Monday, March 4th, 2013, and I'm Darko, and my website is ggnonline.com. On our YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013, and the link should be posted in YouTube's video description. We left off with this article, uh, says here, sequester to cut education, but could continue massive aid to Israel. Again, so, yeah. There's all kinds of paradigms, and one of them is, of course, is what the education is greatest. So you know, even uh, you know, in veterans today, you know, they'll put that stuff out there. Ambitious goal to be formally designated as the United States' major strategic ally is apparently on the agenda at the annual American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee or APAC, and they're gathering that's kicking off in Washington. If the plan becomes legislation, legislation, it could oblige the U.S. to support Israel diplomatically and militarily if it strikes Iran. So. That's what we were just uh, talking about. Uh, settler complaints spawn Israel's new Arab-only bus lines. So flyers warn Palestinian workers to stop using existing routes. So a flurry of complaints from Israeli settlers has led to the introduction of a uh, new Arabs-only set of bus lines, which is designed to keep settlers from having to ride on the same buses with Palestinians and to keep the Palestinians from being on buses that might enter settlements. So this year, settlers have complained that allowing Palestinians on buses that enter settlements was a security risk, even though there doesn't appear to have been any incidences. Israeli security forces stand by while settlers harass Palestinian shepherds, witnesses say. The photo circulated over the weekend shows border police officers shaking hands with masked settlers who proceeded to harass Palestinians who just moments before had been denied access to their land. So officers were trying to stop the settlers. They were caught on camera this weekend uh, shaking hands with mass Israeli settlers and then repeatedly stood by while that man and his friends proceeded to harass a group of Palestinian cattle herders. Police questioned Israeli about attack on Arab women. Israeli police said they have questioned a 17-year-old Israeli girl from uh, West, ba West Bank Jewish settlement suspected of participating in a group attack on a Palestinian woman last week at a Jerusalem train station. They attacked her and ripped off her headscarf and a bystander photographed the incident, and the photos were publicized widely in Israeli media. So also the Israeli women spit on her. Uh, but most of you are already aware of these articles. I've covered them before, and they've been covered by mainstream media. Israeli sniper posts photo of child in crosshairs. So, so Israeli soldiers showed a child in crosshairs of a rifle scope, and uh, he posted that... Uh, on January, January 25th by the 20-year-old Israeli sniper. But this just goes to show you um, what happens, right? Israel quietly sends migrants to the Sudan. So, so here, Israel has quietly repatriated hundreds of Sudanese migrants in recent months. So they're being accused of coercing Africans into potentially life-threatening situations and possibly violated international norms for treating refugees. So Israel says the departures have been voluntary, but they follow a mass of arrests of migrants and vows by Israeli leaders to halt the influx. So. Israel's government to move uh, to outlaw a secret program of sterilizing Ethiopian Jews. For the first time, Israeli government is taking steps in the direction of acknowledging an alleged clandestine program that sterilized an entire generation of Jewish Ethiopian um, immigrants. You know, the irony here, too, of course, is what? Is that you, these African uh, Jews, Asian Jews, and Arab Jews were actually, you know, they're, they're ancient, and they actually existed before the European Jews, which is what most of Israel makes up, European Jews that came from ancient Khazaria, which took on the religion not because they care about the religion, but so they wouldn't be attacked by the East, which is uh, Muslim, and the West, which is Christians. But hey, they had these uh, Jewish Ethiopian women immigrating to the country, were given a choice. If they wanted to enter and live in the country, they would be subjected to a sterilization program. Obama to demand Israel withdrawal from West Bank. So again, I'm going to put this in a poll on my website because uh, I think this is like a, what I talked about. I want to know what uh, other people think if this, if this is just a big show as far as Obama acting like he's anti-Israel. When we just show it all the money that goes and flows into the, into the, quote, Jewish state, the Zionist state. The U.S. President Barack Obama is going to demand a timetable for an Israeli withdrawal from the occupied West Bank during his visit to Israel later this month. The World Tribune quoted on Monday an unnamed Israeli official as saying that Obama has made it clear to Israel and Natyanu that his visit is not about photo ops, but the business of Iran and Palestinian state. No, it probably is just about photo ops. 
The implication is that if Israel won't give him something he can work with, then he'll act on his own, the report quoted the sources saying. We'll see. Joe Biden on the Iran threat. President Obama is not bluffing. It says, uh, Biden says President Obama isn't bluffing when he says he'll use military action if ultimately necessary to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. He told APAC, the pro-Israeli lobby at the annual conference, uh, that protecting Israel is the United States' interest. Biden says efforts to delegitimize Israel as a Jewish state are the most dangerous, is the most dangerous change he's seen as it's related to Israel's security. He says Israel's legitimacy is non-negotiable for the U.S. Obama to threaten Iran with military strike in June, Israeli media reports. Again, you always hear these when they're going to launch an attack and it never happens. But so he's supposedly going to tell Natyana that a window of opportunity for a military strike in Iran will open in June, Channel 10. So they're talking about the diplomatic option window. He says Biden says that window is closing. Pakistan Iran gas pipeline to raise serious concerns, says the U.S. The U.S. has warned Islamabad that the Pakistan Iran gas pipeline project, if finalized, would raise serious concerns under the U.S. Iran Sanctions Act, saying that that has uh, been made absolutely clear to Pakistan. So it goes on here, and he says that they were talking about actually imposing sanctions on Pakistan if the project went ahead. So it has nothing to do with the nuclear program. It has to do with being a threat, an economic threat. And they're going to economically squeeze the middle class in Iran to put pressure on their leaders. But, of course, we all know that it's not going to happen because it doesn't work like that. So the middle class in Iran is going to pay for something that they have no control over, all in the name of just having an eastern bloc and a western bloc and, uh, you know, basically competing blocks, these two blocks for trade, for energy, monopolies. Pakistan bomb explosion in Shia neighborhood kills 45. It says that this happened on Sunday. 45 people have been killed and 150 others injured in a bomb explosion in the Shia neighborhood, Pakistan's port city of Karachi. Also, you have two killed, several injured in an attack on Pakistan Shia funerals. So they're trying to hold a funeral. This always happens. They've been killed and several others hurt in Pakistan's city of Karachi after gunmen opened fire on the mourners attending a funeral held for the victims of the recent attack. So they say here 400 Shias were killed in Pakistan in 2012, which was the deadliest year on record for the Pakistani Shia Muslim community. So usually it's reported as being what Sunnis that are responsible for it. U.S. Saudi-funded terrorists sowing chaos in Pakistan. So they said this has to do with the Gwadar report. Remember that article from the 18th, but um, they'll just they'll carry it out whenever they want, right? Sunni extremist groups. Riyadh, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, has moral duty of helping Syria, they say. So it says Saudi Arabia will do everything in its capacity in Syria. It says Saudi Foreign uh, Minister, we cannot bring ourselves to remain silent. Morally, there is a duty. They're widely believed to be supplying weapons to the militants in Syria. Iraqi gunmen kill 42 Syrian soldiers and 70 Iraqis. I've, I don't think I've ever really seen a story like this since covering this, these issues in the last couple of years. And it goes on here and it says that the convoy of Syrian soldiers entered Iraq through this uh, Yerabaya border when militants fighting against Assad's troops took the Syrian side of the border on Saturday. It goes on and says there's reports of several Syrian government officials who were also among the dead. The soldiers were on their way back to the border in Iraq's western Anbar province where Iraqi authorities were going to hand them over to Syrian officials. I think we're talking about the militants. The gunmen attacked the convoy from two sides with mortar rounds and the automatic weapons and mines. Eight Syrians and four Iraqis were also wounded. And as a result, Iraq closes border posts after a Syrian rebel seized crossing. So the Iraqi army has closed the Rabia border crossing uh, here in northern Iraq uh, this weekend after Syrian rebels captured the town. On the Syrian side of the border post, Iraqi troops reported firing warning shots to keep the rebels out of Iraq, but there was no indication of a direct clash. It says Iraqi troops were quick to close the border and fear that rebels would attempt to use the crossing as they have uh, with so many on the Turkish border where they can smuggle weapons and actually smuggle people for kidnappings for ransoms. That's what they do. Uh, Iraq has officially declared its non-interference in uh, the sectarian war or foreign invasion, uh, though it has been accused of backing the Assad government indirectly. Uh, through its close ties with Iran. We'll get close to that right here. The CIA is training Syria rebels, or Syria's rebels. They're not really Syria's rebels. They're mercenary, foreign mercenaries attacking Syrians. 
The United States has these word games, you know. The United States is slipping and sliding down that proverbial slippery slope in Syria towards something that looks increasingly like war. According to the New York Times, CIA is training Syrian fighters in Jordan. Buried in the story today about Secretary of State John Kerry's announcement that the U.S. will increase aid to the rebels, including medical supplies, uh, medical supplies and the always, those always tasty MREs, was in the previously unreported nugget. A covert program to train rebel fighters, uh, which the State Department officials here were not prepared to discuss, have been underway. It says CIA since last year has been training groups of these terrorists in Jordan. Syrian opposition, and Jordan uh, denies it. Why? Because they don't want to be known as harboring and training terrorists, just like Turkey has been carrying out terrorism and aiding terrorism. Uh, how can we expect to ask Britain to play a role while uh, it's uh, determined to militarize the problem? How can you ask them to play a role in, in making the situation better, more stable? How can we expect them to make the violence less uh, while they want to send military uh, supply to the terrorists. And don't try to ease the dialogue between the Syria. Till then, we don't expect from arsonists to be a firefighter. So I guess the uh, Syrian president says that uh, the West or UK in particular is naive, confused, and unrealistic. He slammed the arsonist government for pushing to end EU um, arms embargo. He said there would be grave consequences if the West armed the rebels. He also accused Britain of attempting to militarize the problem. So, so Syrian president has launched an astonishing attack on Britain, accusing the arsonist government of being naive, confused, and unrealistic. And also, you had William Hague dismissing Assad's criticism as delusional. Also, he said uh, Syria lies at the fault line, geographically, politically, socially, socially, and ideologically. So playing with this fault line will have serious repercussions all over the Middle East. Lastly, any intervention will not make these things better. It will only make them worse. Europe and the United States and others are going to pay the price sooner or later with the instability in this region. They do not foresee that. Iraqi Lebanese Shiites unite to protect Damascus shrine from Sunni rebels. A Shiite military unit has emerged in Damascus to fight Sunni rebels, while also pledging independence from Syrian President Assad. The multi-ethnic brigade reportedly claims their only aim is to protect a local shrine. This follows reports that rebels have destroyed or damaged other Shia holy sites across the war-torn country. Last week, Iraqi Prime Minister warned of potentially dangerous consequences to neighboring countries of a rebel victory saying the most dangerous th thing in this process is that if the opposition is victorious, there will be a civil war in Lebanon, divisions in Jordan, and a sectarian war in Iraq. Chad says it killed Algeria hostage mastermind in Mali. Chadian soldiers in Mali have uh, killed this uh, Mokhtar Belmokhtar, the Al-Qaeda commander, who's masterminded bloody hostage taking at an Algeria gas plant. But what they're not going to tell you is what? Is that this guy is a CIA asset. That's right. Let's not forget, you had, what, Canadians among the militants and the hostage-shaking in Algeria. But hey, it's always good to get kill witnesses, right? When somebody knows too much, you gotta, you gotta get rid of them. You know, loose ends. Air Force increases UAV presence in uh, Niger. So we're talking about a drone base in Niger. So now they're saying that the Air Force's new presence in West Africa that began in late February has around 100 airmen deployed to the southwestern region of Niger. Well, at least the Air Force Times is telling the truth uh, right here. It says that uh, they're there to protect U.S. resources, personnel, and interests in the region. Yeah, but unfortunately, they, they follow by saying the deployment is there to promote regional stability. Actually, they're there to create instability so they can create more drone bases so they can gather more intelligence and take more resources. Third French soldier killed in Mali fighting. So third soldier uh, French serviceman has been killed in Mali. Then you have NATO accidentally shoots two Afghan boys, said it was due to mistaken identity. Oops, you know, it's a mistake, sorry. U.S. consolidates Afghan bases with eye towards pulling out. Consolidates Afghan bases, let's see what that means. Afghans urge U.S. to stop demolishing bases. U.S. destroying everything, fearing Taliban might. So the U.S. is feverishly dismantling every last trace of them, even emptying the dirt-filled barricades. Afghan officials say they can use it for their own bases or convert them to schools, other things that the government can't afford to build. Interesting in this video with Dennis Rodman, George Stafalopoulos, whatever, 
uh, keeps going on about prisons. So how could you overlook how they have so many prisoners there? 220,000 prisoners. But that's all you can really say, right? Because what? The United States has the most prisoners in the world. Thank you.